You're now locked into Darius Sarasian on Defected Broadcasting House. Hi guys, I am Darius Sarasian and you are listening to my first episode of Defected Broadcasting House radio show. It's an honor to be doing this, so thanks to the Defected crew for having me. We're going to be doing this every month. On this month's show, I've got Weekend Weapons coming to you for the next 20 minutes or so. I've got four tasty tracks that are doing it for me at the minute. Then I've got an interview with Patrick Topping. I had a chat with him just before we both flew to America for our gigs out there. And then there's a 90-minute mini-mix from myself. So we'll start with the first Weekend Weapons tracks. This is by Crackers at, and it's called I'll Be There. This actually went down a storm when I dropped it in Miami at the defected party at the Island Gardens. The sun was starting to set and it had just filled out perfectly. So it was just a perfect vibe. Proper house music, best way to start the show. Darius Sarasian on Defected Broadcasting House. So this track is by Tiptoes, it's called Somebody and it's on the massively underrated Hustler Tracks record label. I played so many tracks from this label, it's just superb. But this one in particular, I got it sent recently up front, proper house music once again. I'm 
to all the DJs, all the producers, all the clubbers that celebrate real house music. So turn the volume up and keep it locked to Defected Broadcasting House. track you're listening to now is by Demarcus Lewis. It's called When I Get What I Want. Super record, but a massively underrated artist, Demarcus Lewis. I need to actually get him on my Moxie Music label. Proper Chicago house vibes. Uh, this one goes down great every time I drop it, so it only felt right to put it on my first ever defected broadcasting house radio show. Darius Sarasian on Defected Broadcasting House. Thank you. 
Okay, so we're on to the final Weekend Weapons track before my interview with Patrick Topping. This track is actually by Paul Wolford uh, under his special request, guys, and it's an edit or remix, you could say, of one of my all-time favourite house tracks, Romanthony, Let Me Show You Love. I believe this is unreleased and it's coming on Glasgow Underground Records. I heard Paul play this on Radio 1 just after he played my Mercy Me track and I hit him up and I said, look, man, there's no way I'm leaving you alone you give me this record so the next day he fired it over to me but superb record once again Paul Wilford is just an absolute don at producing Defected Broadcasting House When I get myself month with some more and now it's time for my interview with Patrick Topping I actually caught up with him just before we both flew away for our tour shows a couple of weeks ago we actually met up in Miami Uh, we ended up at the PIV party and it got a little bit (laughs) out of hand as it does in WMC before I ended up playing the defected show Patrick has actually just announced his residency at DC 10 every week in July and August for his Trick record label party. I'm actually doing one of those shows alongside the several I'm doing for Defected this summer in Ibiza. And also I'm doing a couple of Octane, I'm doing two for Paradise, uh, one for Solid Grooves and there'll be a couple of Moxie Music parties as well. I'll be announcing all of my shows very soon. Anyway, let's get to this interview and see what Patrick has to say. The Word with Darius Sarasian. Hey, 
Hello. Patrick. Yes, mate. How, how are you? How are you doing, man? You good? I'm good, mate. I'm really good, you? Yeah. Good. You're a very hard man to track down. Very hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a mission. <laughs> I've seen, actually. I've actually seen you being on a mission. Firstly, how was your holiday in Maldives? Was it nice? Oh, it was so lush, man. Like, it was the second time I've been in Maldives, and it's the favourite place I've been in the world. It's amazing. Like, uh, oh, it's just so good. I couldn't believe it. We're turning my phones off. I yeah. my phone off for the week, which I quite often do if I get a chance to. Yeah. Just, uh, like, a digital detox, and Hayley did it for the first time, so it was the first time we've both been fully in sync like that, so we yeah. really just got to take it in, and then it, it was amazing, I. Yeah, I saw, I saw you were on the bikes at night. Me and Lauren went... We went, I think it was 2018, and we did the same oh, thing, and I, and I was thinking, oh, I wish I went back there. Definitely gonna, gonna, gonna have to go soon again, so yeah. I saw that you post about making house music again. What made you feel like doing that again? Well, it's just that I feel like, basically, I like to play all sorts. I not just play, like, one genre. I did yeah. techno, I house to play, like, pop edit, this, this go up, go into, like, even like hard hard house in the maybe it's even like Makina or like yeah. and disc, disco like loads of different stuff I like to play loads of different stuff so then but, but my music I was putting out didn't reflect that because at the time I was releasing everything with our creations yeah. which is an amazing label and it was like such a good uh, platform for me to begin with mm. but they have a very particular sound of what they wanted so some of the stuff I was making wasn't coming out because uh, it just didn't fit with Hot Creations. That's kind of when I started Trick and I started putting out like heavier stuff, and more more techno stuff. Yeah. So then I wanted to put out that stuff and then I've had people like Joseph Capriari, Adam Beer, people like them playing the heavier stuff, the more techno stuff. So yeah. then now I feel like I've, I've done that, I've picked that off because that was something I wanted to do. I wanted to show that other side to us. Yeah. So then now I'm back in this place where now I feel like free to make whatever I want to do and then um because I've been I've been keeping away from house on purpose because all my biggest songs have been house like forget be shops in house voicemail stuff like that have been housey so I wanted to show people another side to us and I feel like I've done that so now I, so now I'm free I'm thinking well I'll just do anything and my default is house because I I, I am more house than techno yeah, yeah. you know what I mean so like I've just started going back and just making house and I've just been having so much fun with it yeah. and like it's kind of like re reviving the kind of stuff I was making and then put releasing in like 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17 but then I've learned so much more about production and I have got loads of new influences since then so it's kind of like my old sound but yeah. with like a, a, with a complete twist like and some of the stuff I've, I've made I've said to people they, they like wouldn't even know it's me they're like I had one thing that's you but then once they hear that it's me they're like oh well now I know I can like I can pick that up a little bit in the energy of it the feel of it yeah yeah but I think the best music always comes from artists when they're doing things from the heart and I think you've always done that and you're not trying to force something or make something for another label or fit a fad you've always done what you want to do and I think that's why you've smashed it so much so excited to hear this stuff so yeah send it over when you uh, I always send you my stuff so uh, make sure you do swapsies <laughs> yeah no I will send it no one's got this no one's got this and it's just like it's really fun that's the thing about it the stuff that I've put out I, I think it's the best stuff I've, I've ever made I, like, wow. I'm into it more than anything I've made before and I know like technically it is because like I just learned so much more in production over the years you just you're constantly learning on you can yeah. you can never know absolutely like that but then but then just like the I don't know just the, the vibe of it I, I, I'm just the most excited about this than I have been anything I thought before so. amazing okay well excited and stuff for your fans uh, and people who love your music so yeah um, another question I got for you is I've noticed that you seem to love to bring through new artists I don't think enough artists or DJs who are in a position to help upcoming acts do so you know I've done it with Moxie Music I make sure I give a platform to upcoming acts but I've seen that you do and you've built your own crew and it's great to see do you, do you find that really rewarding doing that? Oh yeah, of course, yeah, it's so, it's so good. That's one of the main reasons I started Trick was because I just had all this music I was getting sent through mm. um, and it like didn't have a home and it was all like getting this cohesive kind of like energy to it and I was like, 
that was part of the reason of doing it as well as having the freedom for my music it was a part of music by other people and then I'm buzzing because we've managed to put out like the debut release of quite a few artists now yeah. they, haven't, they haven't released music anywhere before they're mm. completely unheard, unheard of and managed to put them out and then some of them have like careers blossoming and they're like going and, and then not just people who's part of the very first release we put out some people who are like right at the start of the crew they might have had a couple of releases um, so yeah I love I love doing that and then uh, it's class to see because some of the people on the label now is, are like flying out yeah they are which is mint yeah. which is mint and they all have a particular sound as well so it's, it's good but the scene needs that you know what I mean um, not everyone playing the same kind of stuff which is good so yeah hats off to you man um you come across as hungry as ever to play and I know because I'm always travelling myself and I see other, other DJs and sometimes sometimes you know they seem to not be as excited you see them in the airports you know I'm, I'm, I love what I do and I will never ever get bored of this yeah. if, even when I've got no sleep I'm in the airport and I, and I suddenly think oh I'm playing at this club I remember how good it was last time I'm excited and I'm buzzing but I feel like you are probably the most I know of any other DJ when I see you post or when I bump into you. And that, oh, cheers. You know, you're, ex- you're buzzing to play. Do you think you will ever lose the hunger for it as you've got now? I don't know. I'm not at the minute. It's, it's not letting up. It's just getting more intense. I'm just getting more obsessed. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, especially yeah. as you start progressing your career as a new door so opening, I'm like, what's next? What we're doing then? I'm just like... I don't know. I love it, and like yeah. like you do. It's not. It's not. It's not work because we're just. I mean, there is a there is a lot of hard work and hours I put put into into projects and stuff. But like it's your that. passion, because, isn't it? Because it's a passion. Yeah, it's it's, it's easy to, to to do to work hard to that level to push yourself because it's just it's yeah. just something we love and like I still very much feel like that and it's not waning at all at the minute. But like as I. As I get a bit old now, I'm getting on a little bit now. You're I'm not, like, mate. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, yeah. But I'm like, um, I do like a little bit of the day parties. Tend to be a little bit of a, I yeah. like the broken day parties and stuff like that because the constant heavy nights. Yeah, is, yeah. Uh, is, and I don't like the party as much anymore. So like that side of it, I'm kind of like being a bit more like... Uh, tactical with like me, me touring and stuff like yeah, that but yeah. like the passion for the music making music the label DJ and going, going to new places and that, I, I absolutely love it but like also another thing is though because like, I'm getting more into production mm-hmm. I think like I do see us shifting it a little bit and taking less gigs because I'm fortunate now where like I'm getting a, a lot of good offers to play places and stuff so I'm like maybe I can like can do yourself. slightly less gigs but but then not like step back from music use that time to be in the studio more and make more music because I feel like that's the one thing I've been neglecting because I used to make music like every day before I started touring and then I, I've like neglected it a little bit because it's such a hard balance for us but I would like to shift it a little bit more into the studio yeah. definitely yeah yeah um, yeah but I mean, the hunger's there for making the music as well, oh, just as definitely. much as yeah, 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 yeah. No, and the hunger's still there for DJs. Yeah, I never don't get us wrong. Yeah, um, but I still love that. That's my passion. Yeah, I mean, I never go in the studio thinking, oh, I've I've got to make a track now. I've got, I haven't made one for. I am. Um, I get withdrawal symptoms. If I've been on tour for two weeks in America, I'm I'm always making ideas for another track. If I hear something, I could get inspired by anything. I could be in a shop and I hear an '80s record and I hear. A certain riff or a, you know a certain sound being used I make yeah. notes in my phone and as soon as I get in, I <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. and I'm home That's and I'm like yeah yeah it, it, it works man because half of it's the ideas isn't it yeah me but the thing is what I do which I'm trying to flip is like basically what I've been doing since I started touring and like I had my first release in 2013 and then it starts snowballing from then but like it got to about 2014 I got busy quite early off the back of forget um, yeah. that really so then at that point I, I wasn't I couldn't really make music that much on the road because I just couldn't find the balance so what I started doing was I started taking a month off every year at the start of the month like January, February time yeah. like, often over my birthday I'll take a month and I'll just make like as much music as I could 
in a month and then release that throughout the year and then I wouldn't really look at uh, making music again until the next year yeah. like all, all, all the time I would be making notes on my phone yeah. and then uh, then it would come to my studio time and I'd have to collate them and organise them and be like right what am I doing here and then the only really music I made during the year was remixes you know like when you have that deadline you've, and it's not a complete new idea it's, it's, it's easier to handle a remix I thought in those yeah. circumstances and um, maybe so do some edits on the road you know like re-edits and like maybe a couple edits but like handling like main production I never have hardly done I think like last time I made some on the road was when I did that Sam Fender remix and that was like 2018 and yeah, I made I that on like a few on a, like a few flights and stuff but like anyway so then that period started getting longer and longer for me it'd be like four weeks and then I'll take five weeks off the next day then six weeks off and it got up to eight weeks and then here we are now where I've had an epiphany where I was mm-hmm. just off on my time there right and I had uh, six weeks uh, studio before I, before I went on holiday there yeah. because I really en- really enjoyed it and I've now decided that I'm going to try my best to keep up the music throughout the production throughout the year. So yeah. like, uh, I'm not just going to leave it yet because it was frustrating because you forget things and you have to relearn things and some things are lost forever. And then being in that creative, it's not... The, it's been good. I mean, like, it, it's, uh, it has been a good way of handling it for some, uh, Obviously, I'm buzzing with where I'm at, but I think now uh, I'm reeling the gigs a little bit and I'm uh, taking a few weeks off throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. For dedicated studio time instead of leaving it a full year. Then also now I've like upgraded me on the road little setup. And I'm mm-hmm. like now I'm going on tour in North America and I've set myself a big goal. I'm going to make one track hopefully whilst I'm on tour, which I never normally do. But I just I just want to keep my mind in it. Yeah. The creativity yeah. inside the, the technical side of like logic and all the plugins and just like so yeah. I feel like it's a it's like a new era for me. Hopefully I can hopefully I can keep this up. Wicked. Well, can I hear the enthusiasm? in your voice which is amazing so final question and it's an easy one basically where are you off to next <laughs> what's coming up yeah well I'm in Heathrow now about to fly up there Phoenix Arizona to start this uh, month long North American tour it's all in the States and I've got one in uh, Canada yeah. so yeah we're going to be going to be away for a, a month on yeah. the road are you there for WMC in Miami yes, I'm doing uh, Camel Fat's party Wicked. Some pool party for Camel Fat. Wicked. Um, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, we're, I, there. we're in Miami for a few days, though. So. Uh, um, Lauren and I, we're going to be flying there because I'm playing in a Ibiza on the 18th, 19th. Then um, I'm flying to Miami. So I'm there for four or five days. So give you a shout, hook up some food. Yes, mate, that would be good, yeah. right, definitely. Yeah, so, remember in Mexico we had a cactus for breakfast, we'll maybe try to not do that this time. <laughs> Hopefully something nicer this time. <laughs> oh, good. Well, listen, bro, thank you for your time, I know you're busy. Um, hope you enjoy the track, Mercy Me, and um, I will... Oh, yeah, mate, your new one's class, I'm going to be playing at this too, I love it. Wicked, mate, glad you dig it, man, thank you. Um, right, stay in touch, bro, and I'll probably see you in Miami, safe travels. Yeah, nice one, you too, mate, in a bit. All right, bro, bye-bye. The Word with Darius Sarasian. Okay, big up to Patrick Toppin for giving us his time to do that interview. I have to say, I've known Patrick for years and he genuinely is the most down-to-earth person I know in the industry when it comes to DJs and a great laugh to hang around with as well. Um, I wish him all the best at DC10 and I'm looking forward to doing that show. Patrick, thanks for having me on that. I'm going to smash it for you. Right, now it's time for my mini mix well, it's not really a mini mix it's 90 minute set so i'm not going to talk over this so you can enjoy the mix lots of house music and the first track on the mix is the track mercy me that's coming out on my moxie music label and this is the track that i've given to patrick that he said he loved spinning uh, this is going to be out in april i'll be back at the end of the show hope you enjoy this mix you're in the mix with darius sarasi Thank you. 
never stays the night Just cause all the boys I wouldn't kiss her twice She cleaned that shit right up She makes me freaking high Don't take her to the mall She wants to have it all She needs to get a life Cause she's a pie cleaner Cause she's a pie cleaner Cause she's a pie cleaner
listening to Darius Sarasian on Defected Broadcasting House. But I'm a survivor.
Boston House.
So that's all we have time for this month. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Any track ID requests, feel free to tweet me. There's a full track list in the info. Thanks to Patrick Topping for the interview. Thanks to the boss Simon Dunmore for having me doing this. I'm looking forward to doing this every month. If there's anybody else you would like me to possibly interview, feel free to tweet me and I'm going to possibly see if I can maybe get some guest mixes every now and then as well. Thanks guys for tuning in. I will catch you all next month and stay safe, look after yourself. Mm-hmm.